Hey, everybody, and Merry Christmas. It's great to be back with you. It's been a while since we've met together uh, online. We haven't even met together in person, really, in a while either, kind of taking a little bit of a Christmas and a COVID break. Uh, I've got some guests with me today. I just thought it would be fun uh, to to do a little bit something different. You know, as as the Grove, we're very interested in uh, missions and doing things around the world in different countries. And I wanted to interview some people today and talk to them uh, about different things that go on in their country at Christmas, some Christmas memories, uh, some good times that you've had, special foods that you have eaten along the way that are great. My friend Gad over there is delighted to be here. He's excited. <laughs> right, Gad? Yes, exactly. Okay. Thank you. So let me introduce you. This is Delmont down on the uh, the corner uh, from Haiti. Right. Uh, I've been here in America for six years. That's right. This is Gad Ben-Avi from uh, South Africa and other parts of the world, right? Yes, that's <laughs> And how long have you been here, Gad? Four years. Four years. And Four you also years. speak a couple of different languages. Afrikaans is my mother tongue, English, and then a bit of... This and that. Okay, and Delmont, you're French? I speak French, a little bit of Spanish and Creole, and a little bit of English. It's not my first language, so it's a little bit. <laughs> and Sam, welcome all the way from the UK via uh, Gilbert Chandler. How long have you lived here in the States now? About 24 years. 24 years. Can you still speak with that that cute British accent of yours? <laughs> I speak American every day. <laughs> but then I'm reminded that I'm not actually from but you here. But can, you can turn it on when you want to, can't you? I think I sound American every day. Do the bikers <laughs> in Apache Junction appreciate your accent or do they oh, just... Yeah, they love it. <laughs> they do. All right. So um, anyway, I'm going to start down there on the end. We're going to start with Delmont. We were talking a little bit in the coffee shop ahead of time. Um, what was Christmas like for you growing up? You know, it's the most exciting time of the year. It's the time you get to spend with your family and friends. You know, you go out and have the biggest meal around and have your grandparents come around and spend some time with you. You don't normally get to see them throughout the year. So having them around, it's great. We don't, know, we don't normally do the, the whole Christmas tree and Christmas gifts. That's not, you know, part of our culture. Because Haiti is a very, you know, poor country, if you would say. But uh, the most important thing we do on Christmas is spending time with our family and friends. So it's always an exciting time of the year. And you get to dress up and go around and run around as a kid. It's always exciting. I know in, in some of the countries I've been to, like I lived in South Africa and Malawi, I know that they go to church on Christmas morning. Is that also part of your tradition to go into church on Christmas Day? Yes, for those that are Christians. We, you know, I grew up in a Christian family, and my mother always makes sure that we go to church. And I love going to church because you get to see your friends and, you know, you get to hear about the Christmas traditions and, you know, the birth of Jesus. It's always great to be around and go to church and spend time with your family again and with your grandparents that, you know, come to town. So it's, it's a good time. When I was uh, teaching in Malawi at African Bible College, they they often would stick the subjects with the the new the newbies with the new professors that nobody else <laughs> wanted to do. So I got stuck teaching uh, creative writing, which was okay. I I always fancied myself a pretty good writer, and but what I didn't know is I had to sit and plow through all of these papers that these people were <laughs> writing. And but one of the things I still remember to this day is I asked the people, the students, sort of like I've asked you guys, what was Christmas like and what was your tradition, and it was all about. Kind like what you're talking about it was about getting together and it was about eating chicken and for the for the guys in Malawi it was a huge treat to be able to eat chicken on Christmas day I'll say it's the same in Haiti honestly yeah so is that kind of the, the your big food you look forward to having some chicken well I lead trips with the gov to Haiti right so when we go on trips I always have my mom cook the big meal when the everybody gets around they eat plantain and chicken and it's, all, it's the same thing around Christmas. Big meals because the family is around and um, just have a great time and enjoying the company because it's the best time of the year. I had a good friend of mine in uh, Malawi who used to work for our sports ministry. His name was Katwayo. And one, one Christmas, I got a couple of my, my buddies here and we, we, we chipped in money for Katwayo to get a goat for Christmas so that they could, they could cook a goat That's on cool. Christmas morning. I thought you meant a pet one. No, not a pet goat. Why would he want a pet goat? They got to eat that thing. So they... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see, I was scared of that actually, that he would turn that thing into a pet. I said, I want to see pictures of that goat getting barbecued on, uh, or bride on uh, Christmas morning. 
Um, so Gad, um, I lived in South Africa for nine years. I, lo- I, I learned to love Christmas in yeah. South Africa, though it was so much different from America. Uh, and in some ways, Americans and South Africans in a lot of ways are a lot alike. But what was Christmas like for you growing up and what do you kind of miss? And um, Look, uh, we Americanized in many ways with a Christmas tree and gifts. I don't think gifts are as f- much a focus in South Africa. Um, it's summer, obviously. There we don't have white Christmases. We have a beautiful summer, you know, uh, time at the beach, whatever it might be. And also, our kids take on vacation for a full month at that time of year. The whole December is a vacation, so you, usually you plan a trip, uh, Kruger National Park. You go to the beach. For myself, we were always at the beach. My dad was a surfer, so we always would just hang out at the beach, and. Um, South Africa, I would say our focal point is braais or barbecues. Um, and that would be a lunchtime thing on Christmas Day. So we love that. It's something I don't miss because we continue to do that here in the States. It's something that I continue to push in my kids, the, the tradition of braying. Um, but it was a very outdoors, family orientated. It's, I think it's always family orientated. If you're Christian, you go to the church uh, in the morning or whenever. And then obviously the real relaxing day would be the day after is Boxing Day. And that's normally everyone in the whole of South Africa is hanging out at the beach. So it's that type of culture. Uh, but again, family orientated, food orientated, um, and hopefully Christ orientated. Yeah. I remember my wife would, uh, because she grew up, my wife's South African, you guys know that, but right. not everybody here knows that. But um so she grew up going to church on Christmas morning, but she knew that I didn't grow up going to church on Christmas morning. So it, it was really, it was kind of weird because we were used to getting up, opening presents, everybody hanging around the house. Well, when I was living in South Africa with her, we'd get up and open presents. And then at some point she would just sort of slip off to church with her folks. And she didn't really ask me, the kids to go with her, which was great because the church that she wanted to go to was the one that she grew up in, which was the Dutch Reformed Church. So we would go over to my uh, my wife's side of the family, they were all Afrikaners and they, they could barely speak any English. She had one cousin who could, uh, but, but the rest, I mean, it was such a struggle and I felt so bad for them because they were trying hard and I was trying hard to speak Afrikaans, but it, it was, it was bad. You've been in those situations before, Gad. So usually what I would do on those days is I would, we'd eat a big, heavy meal, a lot of lamb, and I'd just go sleep in another bedroom somewhere, just let them, just take all the pressure off of them to not have to speak English and uh, just made everybody uh, happy. But no, I, it's weird being in a, uh, to spend Christmas in the Southern Hemisphere where it's hot. Yeah. yeah. I, look, I love it. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm enjoying Arizona, Phoenix. It's, uh, it's not those cold, snowy winters, but uh, I miss the coast. That's the big thing. Just having that surf time, kids on the beach, Sometimes you even have a barbecue on the beach. Uh, Those are the things you miss, but there's, you know, there's wonderful things that we're taking on from the culture here, so. Well, Delmont, you're about to get married here at some point soon. That's right. You're going to be blending some traditions together. That's right. What what do you think, you know, what what do you want to bring into the marriage as far as when it comes Christmas time or when maybe one day if you have kids, what, what do you see that looking like? To me, it's the family thing, you know. Family is big to me, and I grew up, you know, around my parents and all of my siblings. I want to make sure you're always around family during Christmas. That's the most important thing to me. I know that Americans are big on gifts and the tree and all the lights. It's not something I grew up around, which I learned to appreciate it, but I know that the most important thing for me will be family. One of the things I, I found, too, in South Africa was that um, – same thing, like the presents weren't as big. It wasn't as over the top as it is here. It was just a couple of little things you'd get. And one of the things I loved getting was just a, um, a thing of biltong, you know, <laughs> Americans call it beef jerky. Oh, yes. <laughs> and just to get a bag of biltong and like a bottle of wine from somebody or something like that, you know, that was all. And I really learned to just enjoy that kind of simplified thing. And it was kind of weird when we got back here and everything's just so stinking commercialized and over the top. What about you, Sam? What's it like in... Is it as commercialized there as it is here? Well, it didn't be, wasn't when I was, when I was growing up, it wasn't, no. So, you know, we would, uh, basically the biggest thing would be 
where are we going to spend Christmas? Whose house? You know, which grandparents' house or aunt's house? And then it was about the food. Okay, we having roast beef or we having turkey? And it'd be the big dilemma of, you know, oh, I don't want to have turkey, it's dry and all that stuff. So um, and then <laughs> we'd all want to have a um, Yorkshire pudding, which is the, like the kind of, I don't know how to explain it. Like a figgy pudding? No. They like were bring like, us some figgy pudding? No, not at all like that. <laughs> They're basically like, it's like a pancake, but you write, you, it rises in the oven and you, then you put your meat on it. It's kind of a savory type It's a savory thing. thing. Yeah. Okay. So we'd have that with our roast beef and um, it was basically all about the food. It's kind of like, it's for you, Chad, it's the same thing. It's kind of like, you know, family and food and um, obviously, you know, we have midnight mass, so we go... You know, kids would even get to go to that, so we'd be able to stay up late and we'd all be excited. And then, you know, depending on how happy your parents were, if they were going to let you open one present after, you know, midnight mass, maybe. Or um, we had a couple of different traditions. We'd try things out. We were very kind of, you know, different in our house. We were like, okay, this year we're going to do the traditional Christmas where we open gifts after Christmas, you know, after Christmas dinner in the afternoon. And, of course, as kids, you're seeing you know, your little gifts under the tree and you're dying to open them, but then you've got to be made to wait until, I can't you know, believe they made you wait. in the afternoon and we're all just <laughs> like, oh. My kids would revolt yeah, if we, we were, waited until the we afternoon. We were like, please, can we not do that again next year? We don't like that one. <laughs> and then we've actually done it where we open them up the next day after Christmas on Boxing Day, which is, a, which is actually the traditional day for opening gifts. That's mm. why it's called Boxing Day. It's because oh. when the, yeah, exactly. the, the lords or whatever would give their boxes, which are the gifts... To their servants as a thank you. That was kind of where the, you know, where the actual gifts came in. Because Christmas was originally just, believe it or not, about Christ. <laughs> Hard to believe. I know, weird, right? Um, yeah. So it was, and it was very much a family day. It was very much a double, you know, with that Christmas day and the Boxing Day. It was very much a, a long weekend, you know. Like everybody, it was just a, it was just such a huge family time, you know. It was, it was just, I don't know, it was, it was really fun. And then obviously. Um, you know, we get the same thing. We got two and a half weeks off of school. It was like our big holiday. So that oh, was really cool. And we had some, uh, and it was very, um, it was very kind of family orientated, very, you know, playing games and, you know, telling the stories, get the photograph albums out and kind of reminisce over the year and stuff. Um, yeah, it was, you know, everybody's happy. And it was, of course, somebody, there would be snow at some point, not a lot, but a little bit of the fall down. So that was kind of, that was kind of nice. That's why it's, you know, as, as long as I've been here 20, 24, 25 years, it's it's not quite been a real Christmas for me. I, I try to get into it every year, and I'm and I've got kids and everything, but it's still really hard to go. It's just it doesn't feel right. You know, it's kind of a little, little different. But this year, it's it's kind of I'm making it more of an effort. So. It's different as an adult too. We try to kind of recreate that magic that, yeah. that we felt when we were kids, and we want to recreate it for our own kids. But it's it's different. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, I'm feeling it more being here. I told my wife last night, I said, man, Christmas is the best ever. The feeling, the feeling in our neighborhood, everyone's in this festive mood. I mean, besides it being 2020. Um, but in South Africa, it was so much just a holiday, vacation, six weeks, the kids were off. Yeah. Um, I loved it because of that. But at the moment, I'm experiencing that Christmas feeling, which I'm loving here in the States. So I, I've ne South Africa, we didn't have such a... Christmas orientated feeling, festive time. Yeah, I feel it. I'm loving, I'm loving the States for that. Me too. Yeah. And I, I love going, driving around and looking at Christmas lights. And I know that that feels kind of over the top. In South Africa, nobody had it. I mean, yeah. occasionally somebody who had been to the, who'd been to the States and brought some back, but you. It's so funny because uh, in England, we don't have decorate necessarily the outside of our house. We would decorate the inside of our house. So inside we'd have like the fairy lights and, you know, tinsel and decorations and ornaments and stuff. And outside, we really wouldn't have anything, you know, maybe a poinsettia or something like that. Oh. But and so that's why it's kind of like, you know, when I came here and I was like, oh, my gosh, it's like I couldn't believe it. It was just, you know, it's like Hollywood or something. You're like, oh, wow. Do you remember in South Africa, the towns, the main street of every town is yes. decorated beautifully? Yes. Somerset West, where I'm from, or yep. Paul or wherever. So every town has the main street, and that's what we as kids yeah. would go. We'd actually drive through the main street. It just came back to me now. <laughs> we did but that our too. homes were never decorated yeah, with lights. The same for yeah. us that the white lights be streamed, yeah. We right did now. that too, and we would, we would go and get an ice cream cone, and then we would drive. Like there was exactly. We'd is. drive slowly through the town, the main street, turn around, and that was like us going to look at Christmas lights. But 
we we got lucky because our neighbor across the street was from Germany and he was he traveled all over the world. He was a big business guy, but he went all out. Like people would drive through our neighborhood just to come see his house. So when we looked out of our front windows, this is what we saw. Rizzo, so Rizzo. it was it was so great. Yeah, I mean, we had the best we had the best view in town at Christmas time. There's, there's so many things that come into the US. It's like, you know, to be able to put my kids in the car and say, okay, we're going to have hot chocolate and we're going to go drive around looking at the lights. That, that's kind of like our little traditions now. So it's kind of like, you know, you take on you take on the ones around mm -hmm. you and it's like, you know, that's a way cooler tradition than, you know, bunches of the ones that we had. So it's like it's, you know, there's a lot more there's a lot more kind of mm. a, I don't know, variety here. I think one thing we all share and we all have in common is that we're all away from extended family at Christmas. Mine's in Mississippi, Haiti. All the way in Haiti. Yeah. And we love it here, but part of our heart's always where the where our family is. You know, and that's just sort of the way that the world is these days. You know, we've all chased jobs and we've all gone different places that we think is best for our kids and for our future. Um, but we leave a little piece of our heart behind I, I still got a lot of family in illinois i got cousins and aunts and uncles and people i haven't seen in years who i used to spend every single christmas with growing up at my grandma's house and seeing everybody and it's it's different now but we're kind of the next we're sort of the next layer that we've got to start it out yeah for all of us right yeah 24 years since i've been home for christmas has it really yeah. oh i think i'm gonna try and get home next year i think <laughs> Yeah, we're hoping to get back to South Africa next Christmas, too, for Hill Marie's sake. Delmont, you see yourself going back for Christmas at some point? Actually, next year I'm planning with my in-laws. Uh, it's going to kind of be a gift for, to my family to bring them some Christmas lights. And it will be first time, right? Um, some Christmas trees and kind of decorating and have a big meal with my in-laws and, you know, my actual family oh. and my fiancé to be, to be wife soon. Um, have a big Christmas party in Haiti. And I think they're going to love it and enjoy it and, you know, experience something new. Well, I hope you guys all have plans to come to our Christmas Eve services here. You guys all RSVP'd up and booked in. I know you'll be here. I got you volunteering. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Christmas time here at the Grove is special. And we we have five services here. I don't know if you guys were here Sunday, but they're they're adding services on the lawn. Uh, 3, 5, and 6.30 on the lawn. So it, this is a great place to be at Christmas for anybody who's watching who wants to uh, be part of that. Um, we'd love to have you up here. One last question for you. Uh, the other night we watched Mr. Bean's Christmas, always a tradition at our house. I'm sure you've seen that a hundred times, right, where he gets the big turkey. <laughs> Haven't you? Or he gets uh, the big turkey on his head. You haven't seen the uh, Mr. Oh, yeah, I've seen it at least once. Oh, yeah. I haven't okay. seen it a hundred times. It's been a while. You've seen it, right? Oh, without and, a doubt. Well, he pulls these Christmas crackers, and he puts all of them together in one thing and yeah, has a big explosion at the end. Let's Here, lift that up, Sam. So my wife made this uh, cracker, lovely. and I'm going to have her and Gad pull this thing apart. Now, I right. hope there's something in there. So you know, you know the Christmas cracker? So the tradition, tradition right? is, is that you yes, pull this thing. This in South Africa. Okay, yes. good. Ready they do it in South Africa, too. And when you pull it, it's supposed to open. Now, this doesn't have a popper in it, yeah. so don't worry. Oh, she, couldn't, okay. she couldn't homemade make a popper. But I oh, think something's God. supposed to spill out. So uh, live TV. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's pull that. One, two, three. Oh, oh, you win. Did anything so come wins. out? So you check what's inside. Is there anything? And traditionally. Do I say there's something inside <laughs> no, for the no, Yes, no. there's something special in there, but oh, for me. Yeah. Oh, okay, traditionally. Okay, tell them what well, is usually in there. Traditionally, you have a paper hat, okay. which you have to wear at your when you're eating Christmas dinner. So it's a little, like a little crown, like a little paper one. And then there's a terrible joke, and there's like a dad joke in there. Super dad joke. Super yeah. bad dad joke in there. There's usually some chintzy little tchotchke key ring, paper clip thing. That plastic toy. Yeah, like, you know, a little soccer ball or a keychain or something really terrible, like a plastic ring, you know, like <laughs> just awful. But it was the most precious thing you've ever got when you're a kid. You're like, oh, you know, you won it, you know. And then there's obviously the bang. Um, that's pretty much it, right? Yeah. And then you would sit and everybody would read their stupid joke. Yeah. And, and we always pulled it like this. Or like a you riddle reach, or something, you Did know? you guys do this where you reach through and you snap? Like, did you cross arms like this? That's, no. a, that's a lot of okay. work. It's coordination. Anyway, we did that. <laughs> that's, that sounds South African. There's <laughs> a lot of drink in our house. It wasn't happening. <laughs> it was. Okay, last question for you guys. Tell me your favorite uh, Christmas uh, special or movie that you watch. And I'll start. When I was a kid, I used to love uh, the little claymation ones. And Santa Claus is coming to town with Kris Kringle, the redhead who turns into the fat Santa at some point. You remember that one? 
used to show on CBS. You guys didn't grow up in America. Okay, <laughs> what's your uh, what's your favorite show, Christmas show that you look forward to now? Well, we watched it last night. My kids begged begged me to start it. So Home Alone. Okay, that's a big. That's uh, it's everything about the kids. Uh, yeah. Home Alone's a big one. And my wife, Jessica, she's trying to get us into these other old-fashioned movies, but my kids say like, they say the graphics are bad and yeah. this and that. Yeah. So Home Alone's our one in our family. All right. Yeah. Sam? Um, I think the one that just would come around every year that my mom and I would watch was Gone with the Wind because it was like five the wind. That's hours. That's not Christmas, though. No, but it was on a holidays at Christmas. It's ah. like, and there's all the James Bond series. But okay. my favorite one personally, I just watched for the first time the other day is uh, Die Hard. <laughs> okay, which is another awesome. question. Is the, You've seen that going around. Is Die Hard actually a Christmas, <laughs> yeah, it's a Christmas movie? movie. <laughs> have you seen Die Hard, Delmont? I do. I, I have <laughs> seen it. And it actually is a good movie. But, you know, I, I don't want to get into details with that <laughs> one. <laughs> so what's your favorite Christmas movie? Actually, I do not have one, you know, unfortunately, because I didn't grow up around TV and having all these fancy things that you guys grew up around, unfortunately. But I liked it. You know, it's, it's different. You, you get to be outside more and be with people you want to be with and actually talk to them and instead of staying at a TV for hours and hours. I mean, I, I, I don't, you know, judge anybody who's done it, but <laughs> it's something I'm... You know, right now I'm learning. I'm doing Good it with my you. fiance. It's yeah. different, but I'd rather be with family and just, oh. you know, talk to them and spend time with them because it's special. It's a special time of the year. Yeah. That's great, Delmont. Thanks for thanks for sharing that. You guys, thanks for being here today. It was You're great welcome. having you. And I encourage you, if you ever come across someone from another country and your comings and goings, I know they're all around here in Chandler and Gilbert. If you keep your eyes open, uh, ask them about their <laughs> ask them about their Christmas and and uh, you know and in this case if, if you see somebody in the next couple of days invite them to come up here to the Grove we've got a special day planned uh, services at 11, 1, 3, 5 and 6 30 we'd love for you to join us so thanks for being with us Iron Man we start up again on January the 12th and 13th uh, look forward to getting back together with you guys then Merry Christmas Merry Christmas thank everybody. you Kyle. all right thank you <laughs>